So I decided to buy both of the brand new M1 MacBook Pros, a 14 inch with the M1 Max chip and a 16 inch with the M1 Pro. I chose the more reserved specification for the M1 Pro and got only 16 gigabytes of RAM. This was so I could test it against my M1 iMac that also has 16 gigabytes of RAM. The overall design of the new MacBook has a very traditional Apple feel. It's great to finally see the return of the ports. We have the good old MagSafe charger along with an SD card, which makes photographers and video editors workflows way more streamlined. When I compared the new 16 inch MacBook Pro to the old 2014 15-inch MacBook Pro, both the thickness and footprint was almost identical. But thanks to the redesigned bezels, you get a much larger display. The only drawback I have with the 16-inch, which is why I'm really excited for the 14-inch, is the weight. This laptop is incredibly heavy, and I could find it getting quite frustrating when I put it in my backpack. Let's cut straight to the performance. I do all of my video editing within DaVinci Resolve Studio 17, and already on the regular M1 chip, this software worked pretty well. The only major drawback was when it came to heavy color grading and applying graphic intensive effects. I decided to take a recent project, which was my Nintendo Switch OLED review, which consists of a very graphic intensive timeline. There's a wide variety of video codecs and formats, all of which were captured within 4K. But what makes this particular timeline incredibly difficult is the anti-flicker effect applied to all of the clips. Because the Nintendo Switch has an OLED display, whenever I was recording and filming footage for this video, the camera was picking up a flicker. For a bit of perspective, on my M1 iMac behind me, this video took over 33 minutes to fully export. And repeating this render multiple times on the M1 Pro, the exact same video timeline rendered out in 11 minutes and 37 seconds. That is a total decrease of 23 minutes sitting around waiting for your computer to render out your footage. And when editing video is your full-time job, time is money and anything you can save is definitely worth it. Something else I should point out as well was that this render was performed completely on battery. The laptop was not connected to the wall. And this is one of the great things about how efficient the M1 chip is, regardless of whether you have your laptop connected to the charger or whether you're running completely on battery, you don't lose any performance. Unlike on Windows computers where you have crazy specs, but as soon as you disconnect the charger, there's a huge drop off in performance. Next, let's talk about one of the most polarizing aspects of this laptop, and that is the notch. Now, when this did get announced at the Apple event, I thought this looked ridiculous and should not exist. But actually when using the laptop, I never notice it. And this is thanks to the mini LED display. Because mini LED works very similar to OLED and basically pixels that aren't being used can switch themselves off. When you use applications in full screen mode, the area where the notch exists just becomes an extended bezel. And the perfect blacks on the mini LED make it completely invisible. And when you are just using apps regularly, not in full screen mode, the notch only occupies the taskbar area. And your mouse cursor will either pass through the notch, or if you're trying to select one of the taskbar menus, it will just jump through the notch. Obviously this notch has been added to give a location to house the brand new 1080p FaceTime camera. This is a huge upgrade from the previous 720p camera found on last year's model. Now in my very first day with this M1 MacBook Pro, there has been an area that I have found a little bit annoying and that has been the keyboard. So the new keyboard is very impressive. It's the exact same magic keyboard that was found on the M1 iMac. The layout, the size of the keys, the key bed, everything feels the same. It also includes Touch ID, which is incredibly quick and makes things super convenient. However, when it came to video editing, because I don't use the magic keyboard, Keyboard. On my main iMac, I actually used the Logitech MX keys. My muscle memory was completely thrown off. And that's because compared to my Logitech keyboard, there is an extra key for the function and emoji buttons. And this was considerably slowing me down when I was trying to video edit. On the topic of changes with this year's keyboard, Apple has now removed the touch bar that was previously found on the Pro models, and it's been replaced with full-size function keys. Finally having a ProMotion display on an Apple laptop is an incredible experience. And quickly scrubbing through my timeline and scrolling on web pages within Safari has never felt so great. And when you combine ProMotion with all of the other benefits that this display has, such as mini LED, one million to one contrast ratio, and HDR support, you hands down have the best display ever in a laptop. If you want to see my full video comparing the differences between the brand new M1 Max and M1 Pro chips, you're going to want to watch this video next.